And again, this is my opinion and what I and how I view things should be done. All ground connections connect to an intersystem bonding termination. That's a single point for grounding all equipment. More, if you have more than one ground rod, they need to be more than six feet apart and they need to be bonded together with at least number six. I would highly recommend some kind of flat wide strap. Ground rods at the base of antenna support structure should be used. Um, it's not required if it's within 150 feet, but I think it just makes good sense. Point number two, bond all equipment in the radio room to a single point. Do not daisy chain the bonding strap, but you run separate straps to a point. From that single point of bonding, use a low impedance conductor to the inner system bonding termination, and I recommend flat, wide straps. You also need to know that all cables, wires connected to the equipment can be antennas, and that includes speakers, uh, USB cables, uh, taps in the IF system. Use devices like ferrite beads, disc caps, RF chokes to stop RF. Ferrite beads are wonderful. Um, relatively inexpensive. Mix number 31 is pretty good at HF. There are different mixes for different frequency ranges. Uh, disc caps are also another way to conduct uh, RF to ground. Shielded cables often have very poor conductors. Uh, and by that I mean the new mic cables that I've seen are frankly pretty, have pretty lousy shields on them. If you're at a swap meet and you see some old, older, but in good condition, um, coiled cords, ground mic cables, buy them because usually the older cables have a really good grounding system, newer ones, not so much. And also, as we've discussed in prior videos, the coax connector connection to the shield is often very poor on commercially made cables. Unless it's crimped, it's likely to be pretty lousy and can be pulled off with ease. So again, bonding the equipment and then the, all that to a single point and then from that single point down to the inner system bonding termination. The goal here is number three, keep RF out of the radio room. Use ferrite beads at the antenna exterior wall to stop common mode currents in the radio room. I don't think there is a thing uh, such um, I don't think there is an RF ground in the radio room, but I do think it's a good idea to have a low impedance path. So if I'm wrong, if there is some RF, we're conducting it outside uh, to that inner system bonding termination. Use ferrite beads, disc caps, RF chokes, and other uh, cable on cables entering the radio room. That includes rotator cables, uh, remote switches. Um, any of those things that, that are outside, all of those things can act like antennas. So that's my take on uh, grounding. I've gotten a lot of help from, uh, from Mike Holt and his website. Um, Mike's a great guy and his videos are just super. And, and in fact, some of them are <laughs> there. His explanations sometimes are really interesting and, and funny, and so they're, it's, it's great to see them. Um, Mike's uh, website, again, is www.mikeholt.com, and it's worth taking a look at that. All right. If you have a different opinion or think I've made a mistake or have a different idea about how things should be done, uh, please post a comment below. If you have another question or if I didn't cover something, post that too. We'll do our best to, uh, to try to answer it. If you have not subscribed, um, please do that. We just went past uh, 20,000 subscribers and I'm really happy about that. This is Jim, W6LG for Hammer Radio Basics. Thanks for watching. See you the next time. Next couple of videos, by the way, will be off topic. Uh, you may or may not want to watch them. They're going to be dealing with uh, other issues of uh, a different nature. And I'll leave that question mark right there for now. 73, W6LG. Bye-bye.